Every game developer knows and fears it. That moment when you first notice that your game runs like total shit. It's easy to miss a game's performance if you don't focus on it from the start. As over time, newly added features will inevitably add to the render time, lowering a game's performance. However, your epic development rig, the PC that you built your game on, is probably a lot faster than most of your consumers' PCs, or even worse, consoles. <laughs> and so the moment always comes, where you as a game developer will have to fix your sloppy code, get rid of those pesky garbage collector issues, measure frame times and truly dig in. By now, most of you will know that I'm working on porting my game City of Springs to the Nintendo Switch. While the game obviously isn't a new Crisis 4, <laughs> Oh, Crisis 4. It's still a big open world adventure game and the performance for these types of games are always a challenge. As players want to be able to see far ahead while maintaining a high texture resolution and fancy graphics. Basically, it's a worst case scenario for most game engines because the more a player has to see, the more advanced the rendering techniques have to be to maintain a stable frame rate. And while we all love Unity, it isn't a pioneer in fancy rendering techniques. So when we are pushing the boundaries of what the targeted hardware can handle, we have to make absolutely sure that we are optimally using Unity in every way possible and that in all our wisdom and best efforts, we didn't actually kill the performance of our project ourselves by doing stupid stuff. Luckily, there are a few fairly easy steps that we can do to check. Every game developer should do this once in a while to make sure that the game is running the best that it can. And here comes the fun stuff, read slash write. Well, this seems like a very simple and safe feature to use. I mean, it's just this small, tiny checkmark. Wrong. This innocent checkmark absolutely destroys your project. There are two places where you can access this checkmark, on your textures and on your models. And the general rule of thumb is not have it enabled ever. But what does this option do? Well, it allows you to read information from your textures or meshes with C-sharp code. If you need to be able to get pixel information of your textures or access certain vertex data from your meshes, then you can enable this option. And it works like this. Generally, when a texture or model is loaded into your game, it first gets loaded by the CPU. The CPU then pushes it to the GPU's memory and the CPU unloads it from its own memory. However, when the read-write option is enabled, it doesn't get unloaded from the CPU, meaning that you're using a lot more memory than is optimal. For PCs, this is less of a problem than for consoles that have a more limited amount of memory. But there's another, much bigger issue. Unity tries to load in everything asynchronously, meaning that you don't get frame hitches or slowdowns when loading in your game assets, but not when you're using the read slash write feature. So imagine what happens when you are loading in this massive but sweet looking 4K texture that for some reason needed to be read slash write. Oh la la. Right, your frame rate plummets. Nah, Dominic, I'm not using this. Why would I? Are you absolutely sure that your project doesn't have this option enabled on the texture or mesh? City of Springs has been in development for over five years and in that time we've done a lot of experimentation. We've had interns working on the project. We used third-party assets. Who knows what could have happened to the game files? Seriously, who knows? I didn't, so better check to make sure. Luckily, with the magic power of the Unity editor script, checking and fixing has never been more easy and I can do you one better. While I made this script myself, I also asked ChatGPT and his editor script was even better than mine, so thanks Chad. Basically, what you want to do is get all assets by using the asset database and filter out textures and models then use the texture and model importer tool to load them in and check if they are read-write enabled. And then just log the asset paths of the culprits. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now you'll just have to fix them by hand. Of course you can also automate this, but that's very scary stuff as there might be a few of them that are 
actually in need of the read write feature and you'll be disabling those as well done well not entirely as there's one sneaky third way to get meshes read right without you even knowing about it when you create meshes through code in the editor they are read write by default and since these kinds of meshes are saved within the scene file you can't disable it you need to save them to disk first and even then you can't disable it, at least not in Unity. You'll need to open up the .asset file with something like notepad++ and look for m underscore is readable, then change the one to a zero and finally it is disabled. I'll be really honest with you, in City of Springs we used loads of in-scene meshes and they absolutely murdered the memory usage. And since these aren't files in your project, you can't find them with the same editor script as before. In this case, you'll have to load in your scenes and then find all renderers and mesh colliders to check if the shared mesh is readable. Doing this freed up an insane amount of memory and sped up my custom scene streaming system as, remember, read-write enabled meshes can't be loaded in asynchronously. And you know what else can be loaded in asynchronously? Compressed meshes! Never, ever use compressed meshes. Seriously, there is absolutely no reason why this checkmark even exists, nor why you should ever enable it. The documentation about this is pretty vague, but there are two ways of mesh compression. One that is enabled in the player settings and may even slightly increase your GPU's performance, and the other one, the checkmark on individual models, which simply kills your project and gains you well, almost nothing, just maybe a very tiny, smaller build size. Yay! Yay! The first one is good, the second one is bad. It's useless, don't use it, ever. And lastly, dynamic batching. Originally, I didn't really want to add this last one, as it's a bit of a legacy feature and only applicable to the built-in render pipeline, BIRP. But if it helps anyone, there's no harm done, right? The dynamic patching technique is old, like really old. The system tries to combine smaller meshes with the same material together, so you end up with lesser draw calls. And we all know the less draw calls, the better, in theory. However, nowadays, in 90% of all use cases, the cost of running this system is actually higher than the gains. In all my game releases over the past 10 years, I've ended up disabling it for a better performance. And even better, with later Unity versions, they introduced a bug with the dynamic batching that somehow messes up motion vectors of the batched objects, causing some weird graphical artifacts. Thank you, Unity! Of course, there's a lot more stuff you can do to make your game run smoother and faster and at a higher frame rate and better, but I don't like making boring 30 minute videos as I've got the attention span of a... At the moment, I've got City of Springs to run at a steady 30 frames per second on the Switch with over 500 megabytes of free memory without degrading the visual fidelity compared to PC. So far, I'm quite happy, but I plan to either target 60 frames per second or increase the visual fidelity, so there's still lots of work and loads of videos on how to optimize your game left. As always, I hope you liked this video and please let me know by liking or disliking down below and see you again next week.